We are Asset Management Limited. Q4 FY22 Earnings Conference Call hosted by JM Financial. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Samir Bise from JM Financial. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Nirav. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 4K FY22 earnings conference call of Nippon Life in the Asset Management. Uh, with the from the management team of uh, Nippon Life in the Asset Management, we have Mr. Sandeep Sikka, um, Executive Director and CEO, Mr. Pratik Jain, and the Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Mr. Ashwin Dubbel, who is the Co-Chief Business Officer, Mr. Sagodar Jatraji, uh, Co-Chief Business Officer, Mr. Saha, the Chief Digital Officer. And Mr. Hiroshi Fujikake, who is the nominee director from Nippon Life Insurance. Uh, I would like to uh, hand over the floor now to Mr. Sikka for uh, his opening comments, post which we can uh, open the floor for QA. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Sunil. Good evening and welcome to our FI22 earnings conference call. We have with us CFO Pratik Jain, Co Chief Business Officer Savata Chatterjee and Ashwin Dugul, Chief Digital Officer Arpan Saha. Head of Elite Partner Group, Nitin Gupta, and Fujikake san, nominee of Nippon Life Insurance from Japan. <clears throat> Overall, industry assets remain stable in Q4, driven by rise in passive and equity segments offset by decline in fixed income assets. The industry continues to see steady interest uh, by retail and HI investors. The industry's unique investor count grew by 10% to 34 million in Q4. The strong growth in investor base and overall assets indicate confidence by long-term investors in mutual funds. We expect the industry to maintain its growth momentum in future also. At Nippon India Mutual Fund, our priority is to be future ready and capture the long-term opportunity. As stated earlier, we are confident of regaining our market positioning as well as recreating and reinventing by continuously innovating and disrupting ourselves. Towards these goals, I'm happy to share with you the key performance highlights for this fiscal. NAM India recorded its highest ever profit of Rs. 7.4 billion in FY22. Our overall mutual fund market share rose by 26 basis points to 7.38%. AEM increased by 24% to 2,833 billion. Along with the steady increase in uh, AU market share, Nippon India Mutual Fund added more than 7 million investors and has, has now the largest investor base in the industry. We increased our share of unique uh, investor folios to 36% within with a base of 12 million investors. The growth was driven by superior fund performance, comprehensive product portfolio, strong wellness framework, robust presence in passive segment and granular distribution network. In line with our investor first philosophy, we keep expanding our product suite to cater to the investors' varied and diverse needs. In FY22, we launched several innovative and industry first products. Across seven NFOs, Nithon India Mutual Fund garnered assets over Rs 40 billion from 275,000 investors. Other such unique, unique offerings in the pipeline include S&P uh, EV Index Fund, the Innovation Fund, and the Artificial Intelligence Fund of Fund. In total, 11 schemes have been filed for regulatory approvals. These products will give investors more value creative revenues to diversify risk and generate sustainable returns. Here I would like to reiterate, even in future, we will focus on strong uh, asset growth, but never at the expense of profitability. With a keen retail focus, we have uh, we have one of the largest retail agents in the industry at Rs. 764 billion. The contribution of retail AEM to total AEM is amongst the highest in the industry at 28% compared to industry, which is 23%. <laughs> Excuse me. We are amongst the leaders in beyond 30 cities category. A category contributed an AEM of Rs. 478 billion. 
17 by 2 percent of the total assets were sourced from these locations against an industry average of 16.6 percent. As on 31st March 2022, 70 percent of the individual assets have a vintage of more than 12 months. The analyzed systematic transaction book is at rupees 88 billion. On a gross basis, systematic portfolios uh, rose by 1.6 million in FI22. A systematic AUM rose by 30 percent to rupees 514 billion. 48 percent of our ship AUM has contributed to uh, contributed for over five years vis-a-vis -vis 21 percent of the industry. Also in volatile markets, folio with lower ticket size have demonstrated longer vintage and better stickiness. 12% of SIP folios have continued for more than 5 years and against the industry average of 8%. Today, Nippon India Mutual Fund offers uh, industries best suite of products in the passive category. With the strong growth in industry's passive growth, our ETF ecosystem is already in place and far ahead of its peers in terms of investor base and mind share. In this segment, we manage an AEM of rupees 558 uh, billion and have a market share of 14%. Excluding the EPFO allocation that goes to two specific mutual funds, we would be the largest ETF pair in the country. The gold ETF is the biggest in this category with rupees 66 billion in assets. Nippon India mutual fund share in industry ETF folios rose to 58%. In this fiscal, we added 6 million investors and accounted for nearly 70% of the total ETF folio additions um, in, the, in the industry for this quarter. Nippon India has 68% share of ETF volumes on NSC and BSC. Our ETF average daily volumes across key funds are higher than the rest of the industry. As a well-diversified asset management company, we have begun to grow our non-mutual fund segments over the last few years. With the government mandates, we manage assets of rupees 682 billion in non-mutual fund segments. The offshore business has assets of 114 billion um, under management and advisory. Leveraging Nippon Life's global network, we continue to ramp up our international presence. Multiple products which are in approval stage with the regulator are a step in that direction. In our AIF business, we manage CAT 3, uh, 2 and CAT 3 AIFs across various asset classes. As of March 22, Nippon India AIF has raised commitments of rupees 45 billion across all funds. Online and digital assets have become a strong source of investor acquisition and communication. Keeping our millennial and zenial investors in center, we have developed a 360-degree integrated frame framework for acquiring, onboarding, engaging, and re-engaging with such digital investors. Beneath this framework lies the science that has been created and improvised over time with digital powerhouses like Google, Meta, Adobe, suite of products. The focus is towards creating a digital experience that is friendly, futuristic, and frictionless for our partners and investors. In FI22, digital platforms contributed 58% of our total new purchase transactions. Over 3 million purchases were executed through digital assets and an increase of 63%. Nippon India Mutual Fund has a well diversified and enabled distribution base. As on March 22, we have over 84,300 distributors in parallel with us. The NFP base rose to approximately 84,100, an addition of over 500 distributors during this quarter. Also, we have ongoing tie-ups with 20 prominent digital partners. Direct Channel contributed 56% of the mutual fund AEM. On the distributed assets, the share of MFDs was 59%. 81% of distributed assets are contributed by individual investors. Nippon India Mutual Fund has a wide presence through 270 locations across the country. We continue, continue to review our existing branch operations and future expansion plans. In recent quarters, our marketing efforts are, in, are increasingly, increasingly focused more on digital channels, which are more cost effective as against offline advertising. Now on the financial performance. For the year ended March 31st, 2022, profit after tax was Rs. 7.4 billion, an increase of 9%. On 
operating profit increased by 46% to rupees 7.6 billion so operating profit as a ratio of average assets under management rose by 25 basis point uh, from 25 basis point in fy21 to 28 basis point in fy22 our aim is to create sustainable sustainable value through growth across asset classes cost optimization initiatives resulting in expanding and favorable operating leverage we continue to focus on increasing the diversity in our revenue streams towards this end over i am happy to state the revenue from non mutual fund business rose by 19% in fy22 and contributed 25% went sorry contributed 11% of the consolidated core profit we continue to grow organically through physical and online channels additionally we remain open to evaluate investments in strategic opportunities that add value to the profitability or complement the existing businesses and ultimately are in the interest of the minority shareholders board has approved the final dividend of rupees 7.5 per share this is in addition to the interim dividend of rupees 3.5 with this this is the highest dividend paid by the company is total of 11 rupees during the financial year as a signatory to unpri the world's largest voluntary corporate sustainability initiative nam india aims to create and nurture a world class performance driven and socially responsible ecosystem integration of esg aspects into strategy operations and risk management will help us outright the dynamic market and build long term relationship with all stakeholders we have introduced a formal esg framework in fy22 we intend to develop responsible investment strategies to build a resilient portfolio that will not only provide superior return to our investors but will also have a positive environmental and social impact in line with the stewardship responsibility we continue to monitor and engage with all our investee companies and in the be- in the best interest of the unit holders in fy22 nippon india mutual fund voted against more than 620 resolutions in our investee companies in interest of the min- our unit holders to sum up i would like to reiterate that at nam india investor centricity remains the key theme we strive to deliver a complete product suite customized to the investor needs superior front performance efficient client servicing based on a comprehensive digital ecosystem we are confident to continue our trend of profitable growth in coming quarters before concluding i would also like to welcome our two new board members from the pal life kimura san and yahu san kimura san serves as the managing executive officer head of global business at nepal life he has an extensive experience in asset management operations on a global scale yahu san is the regional ceo of asia pacific on nepal life he is a industry veteran with over 25 years of experience in insurance sector we are sure with the induction of such a team of individuals we will strengthen our board and we will continuously continuously gain from the valuable guidance specifically in the areas of planning risk management governance and synergies with nepal life global operations with these comments we are happy to take any questions thank you very much thank you we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question The first question is from the line of Viraj from Securities Investment Management Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers in such a challenging environment. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, first is, you know, uh, if you look at our B30 share if, in, as a share of our own AUM, and if you compare to the industry trend. uh the gap between us and the industry you know seems to be shrinking and that's a trend which is evolving and uh, if i also look at the broader you know launch pipeline which you shared in the presentation 
uh, most are in the active uh, so passive space so you know you have etf or index fund and not much in active uh, equity uh, space per se so just trying to kind of understand you know how we are kind of looking at increasing our market share especially in the active equity space where you know we've kind of so there's been not much success in terms of you know gaining share per se for us so just trying to understand the broader perspective there uh, and a related question to that is you know if we look at a yield uh, you know that seems to be further moderating and uh, if i look at last 15 days of march also we have seen a very sharp fall in the yield uh so would pricing be a major lever uh to drive the um growth uh just trying to understand the you know the equation between or the interplay between uh pricing and market share in especially in respect to equity thank you sir thanks you raj i'll take a part of some part of the question and for balance i'll, I'll invite uh, the peak uh firstly i think let me take your uh, question on b30 i think we continue focusing on execution and the fact that we have added nearly 70 lakh new investors is a testimony towards that i think we uh while the gap that you talked uh, is on the aum i think uh, we clearly see i think we continue building on retail and there may be a lag effect with these new investors coming and you see them topping up in times to come uh number 2 your question on equity uh yes i think we had last two years we had a little pressure on equity i think and as you would uh, appreciate uh, as you can see uh, the, these uh, had certain uh, our equity performance has been improving and uh, normally equity performance whenever there is a one year and three year keeps improving i think there is uh, the flow starts increasing just to give put things in perspective um if i was to divide this entire financial year in four quarters the first quarter in equity we had and uh, because the redemptions were high i think we had a negative number but every quarter after that the number kept improving and uh, the net positive number for the quarter uh, q4 was in excess of 2000 crores so i think the positive trend is already visible and i think from our perspective we'll continue to for keep focusing on execution and i think we believe uh, that um, like in fixed income and overall the market share has gone up in equity also the trend seems to be positive and uh, the pulse that we get on ground tells us i think you will see with the lag effect uh, in the next uh, three to four quarters the equity market share also moving up uh, as far as how the new products are concerned uh, which are in uh, even sugar passive i think we have always believed i think to be more investor centric and i think trying to complete our product suite i think that the approach is not to see the whether it's a active or a passive i think continue to keep evaluating products which can uh, which you know add value to the investors and they may happen to be active or passive you know so i think we continue uh, working on completing our product suite as far as the realization is concerned i think if you could just you know throw a little light on that yeah so brad the uh, the change in the last uh, week of march is more to do the compliance part of it i think we mentioned in the last uh, last year as well what happens is that look we have to ensure that all the expenses pertaining to uh, the scheme has to be accounted in the scheme and you know we cannot uh, you know measure it to the last year therefore uh, what happens is there is in certain scheme where expenses are uh, reduced or uh, you know or where expenses have increased you know we need to just give this uh, you know notices and therefore you see there is a small change but then those are resurrected back in the first week of april itself so those are uh, just to make sure that you know we are in fully compliant with the regulation that all expenses of the schemes are borne by the scheme and therefore you see there is some uh, dip in the management fees not the tr realization just the management fees so that's one thing but if you look at the overall basis if you see you know our revenue realization stands at about uh, you know 40 49 basis point as against 52 basis point yes of course there has been uh, pressure on the yields uh, obviously as i mentioned in my last call also there are multiple reasons uh, including the mix the size of the funds uh, you know and the uh, the rates uh, which a competition is offering at etc and also because the lower or uh, the uh, the old am is getting replaced with the new am so there has been slight pressure on the yields but if you see on a passive am basis you know or rather on the operating income basis you know we have uh, made 
about 20 bips 28 bips of realization as against 25 bips last year so you know because of the you know this clearly clearly demonstrate that despite decline in the overall revenue to em yield we have been able to improve our net yields and therefore our uh, you know uh, operating uh, yields are better as compared to last year this is two products uh, one is on the b30 strategy you know uh, sometime back we had put the physical expansion the center expansion on hold and our thinking was we will kind of wait and focus more on digital uh, is there now uh, you know a clarity in terms of what route we are taking uh, uh, you know in coming years uh, regarding the b30 expansion strategy anything further you can elaborate uh, in that sense and the kind of investments will be needed to support that uh that is one and second is you know why i talked about uh, the yield part is uh, because the competition intensity is still by and large the same uh and there are players who kind of are willing to operate at a much more lower profit spread uh, in a bit to gain share uh, relatively the performance has also been much better for them uh, if i look at one three five year basis so uh, just trying to understand you know what will be our pricing strategy given that operating environment So, Viraj, as I mentioned in my opening comments, I think our focus will be on profitable growth. We will, I think, we are very uh, focused that we will not be doing any business uh, at a loss. So, I think we will not be swayed by even if competition is going to be, you know, uh, charging less or paying more. Thank you, Viraj. I'll request you to come back in the question queue. I request to all the participants, please restrict to do questions for participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Mohit Sarana from CLS India. Please go ahead. Uh huh. I have a complete result. Why do your audio is not very clear? May I request you to speak through the handset? Hi, better now? Slightly. okay so uh, sir congratulations on the result first question is uh, in terms of dividend policy uh, this year almost uh, you paid out uh, 90% kind of a payout on dividend so what will be the policy uh, in terms of dividend payout uh, going forward secondly in terms of uh, revenues in, uh, revenues are now uh, looks like they are flat quarter on quarter whereas if you see the markets as well as aum uh, there's hardly any growth so i'm just uh, uh, you know i just wanted to know if there is any lumpy revenue that's included in this quarter yeah, so for the second part uh, mohit uh, you know you see what happens you know last year also again this question has come this quarter has actually two days uh, less as compared to the previous quarter and the average aum actually has fallen uh, you know on the equity side because of the mark to market so obviously you know where equity contributes for larger part of it therefore you see there is a flat growth but effectively if you take the two day more revenue you know you would have some improvement in the revenue as well so uh, you know that you want to answer for it uh, i'll ask sandeep to talk on the dividend policy piece yeah. so so most as we have demonstrated in past i think as per a dividend policy i think we have been uh, part in uh, rewarding the shareholders Uh, with the um, high dividend this year on a stand alone basis it is 96% actually not 90% 96% of the stand alone uh, profits have been given back as dividend i think we'll continue similar uh, policy of uh, rewarding the shareholders with higher dividend uh, i think we at this point of time have adequate capital uh, network i think to explore all mna activities that we uh, which is a continuous part of our journey which we keep doing so i think as far as the profits are concerned uh, broadly 100% of the profits will be distributed at dividend going forward also okay thanks a lot thank you thank you the next question is from the line of prayesh chain from mutila loswal financial service please go ahead Yeah, hi, hi, good evening again. Congratulations on the set of numbers. So, if you just extending the point on the yield discussion, so you mentioned that is that you know we are saying that legacy assets to newer assets transition that has created an impact. So, firstly, whether you know uh, what would be a mix today in terms of share of those uh, legacy assets in the portfolio which would be uh, earning the uh, you know the lower trade. 
and uh, that that would be helpful if you could give some color there. Secondly, do you think that the intensity of this transition uh, would reduce going ahead, given that you know uh, bulk of the new NFO activity will reduce going ahead, uh, especially for the direct for the active liquidity scheme. So that is one part. And secondly, on the other income rate, you know, we've seen a substantial increase in spite of the yields rising. Uh, could you give some color that on the on the yields front, on the other income front? Sorry. Yeah. So um, in terms of uh, you know aging, uh, you know I couldn't understand that what your question is. But uh, from the perspective, you know what we, we do not disclose the exact composition of the aging, but. Uh, if you see last few years, uh, you know we have seen uh, you know significant amount of outflows. So all the assets which were uh, you know now whatever we are remaining is the sticky assets, and uh, uh, the, the recent assets what we have got in the last two years have been uh, the new assets. In terms of the uh, you know overall, I would say that still uh, it would be you know in the range of closer to 50-50. But I do not see that you know the old assets to go out because most of them are now part of the SIP area. If you see, so and hence, uh, you know, that asset to continue. Uh, you're right that uh, you know incrementally, uh, whatever assets we gain, you know, that will be on a lower yielding. But again, as I mentioned, that you know our focus remains that on a path to total revenue. If you see, you know, we are talking about 50% uh, of profitability. So we'll we'll try to manage, you know, around that. You know, so the path to revenue would be about, uh, you know, we'll try to maintain at a pace of 50%. Okay, uh, so uh, so you know uh, on, on this is that whatever yield the, the decline would be there would like you know the operating leverage will take care of it. So that is the you know the whole thought process, and that is how we will be driving our pricing strategy as well. Uh, you know to ensure that you know we have a sustainable growth. Okay, got that. And most of the if you see seventy percent of the assets are more than 12, uh, 12 months. So obviously. Uh, you know, there has you know this is like most of the assets that have come you know is already one year old now. Mm -hmm. Got that, got that. And on the question on the other income. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm, sequentially, uh, sequentially, the other income increased in spite of the fact that the yields had hardened. So you know, what was the reason for the increase in the other income? Um, see, you know, frankly speaking, most of our uh, see, uh, predominantly one could be, uh, you know, the asset increase, and uh, you know, predominantly, if you see, most of our assets now is on the fixed income, uh, our own fixed income mutual fund. We have brought down our equity exposures, and uh, in terms of, uh, you know, in the fixed income also, uh, broadly, most of our assets are in the one to three year category. Okay. But still, you know, I didn't understand the reason for the increase in the other income sequence. Considering that the yields had hardened so much during the quarter. No, so. Uh Well, it is about 34 crore versus 31 crore, so I don't see any significant uh, difference there. Okay. Okay. It is about 3 crore, okay. I think uh, predominantly it is the uh, impact of mark to market, and that too has a last date. See, what you have to see is that, you know, these numbers are, uh, you know, this mark to market is on a last date. So we have to see as of 31st December versus 31st March. Okay, okay. Uh, and just slipping in one more question on the debt side. Uh, you've seen a lot of outflows for the industry in this year. Uh, how do you see the debt uh, flows going ahead for the industry as well as for Nippon? I'll request Ashwin to take this question. Uh, hi, Poet. Uh, so I think uh, you know this year with the uh, what we envisage, you know, overall that the debt yield will continue to harden. Uh, you know, with the uh, Fed policy and central banks all over the world. Hence, uh, you know, we would see, uh, you know, most of the flows that should come into the shorter end of the curve. So consequently, we could see some outflow from long end category and more, uh, you know, consolidation in the liquid and ultra short term category. So at overall levels, we don't see overall numbers uh, going down on debt. 
but the construct of the flows could change because corporates uh, and you know some other entities will continue to raise money uh, uh, hence uh, you could see uh, you know money is coming in for more cash management purposes and we could possibly see uh, you know the long term investments uh, 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 you know could possibly be postponed to end of this year or uh, next financial year depending on how the interest rate situation plays out okay got that thanks that reeti thank you very much for assistance you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of viraj from securities investment management please go ahead yeah i uh, so the question i had asked on the b30 strategy uh, in terms of physical versus virtual and the investments i think i got missed so just wanted to update on that so viraj i think broadly at this point of time we have, because we are present at 270 locations uh and broadly they will not be a lot more expansion uh, new branch expansion and even if we do it would be very minor so there you sure can uh, i think there is not will not be any major uh, investment into that but we will continue investing in the digital space we have already on uh, vernacular in that so i think that strategy there investing in digital continues but physical branches after 270 branches i think we feel that i think at, at this point of time we are ready guys maybe a uh, few uh, could be added but it will not be any significant number in what kind of investments we are making in the digital just generally get a perspective i think we'll not be able to give a specific number on with investments in digital but i think if the only investment that we are doing for rather I mean, than at this point of time i think uh, on the substantial investment are happening in digital space i think because i think the uh, uh, investing both uh, in the ecosystem creating a lot of our proprietary stuff uh trying to also um we have hired so data scientists to work on few things so a lot of things have been difficult to put a we will not be able to give an exact number hmm? but i think it's uh, clearly uh, this remains a, a very important focus area for us what i was trying to get at is is a lot of investment uh, capital led or so you know we may be in that and i don't think so from a capital point of view at this point of view i think it will not make a meaningful impact in the profitability in the s2 ka uh just one last suggestion uh, you know some of the esop plans we have they have a xyz price of somewhere around 373 90 uh, the current price is 330 or and and, and some of the days it's actually even more why don't you know we just explore i mean possibly we can look at buying shares from the market and you know meeting the esop obligation uh, just a suggestion you know it's something you can think on that Ladies and gentlemen, please take connection. The line for the management got disconnected. Participants, please take connection. Why the regional management went to the call? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We have the line for the management reconnecting. So you may go ahead. Yes. Hello. Yeah, Virat. Yeah, Virat. Please go ahead. Yeah. Was my question? I mean, I'm not sure whether you were able to hear. But I think we lost you after the word ESOPs. After that, we lost. Actually, some of the ESOP plans, you know, they have XRS price of around three seventy three ninety, and uh, you know the current price is around three thirty, and then some of the days it's actually even more. So since we are kind of sitting on a sizable surplus cash, we can use some of that to kind of. um buy from the market and you know probably uh, meet that ease of obligation which we would have so just a suggestion you know something we can explore in that sense so no we have uh, we have we have taken your suggestion so you know board will uh, appropriately uh, you know take this matter up in terms of uh, you know because this is more to do with uh, capital markets and shareholding i think it is the prerogative of the board as well as the shareholders so we'll take your uh, recommendations and we'll uh, put it across the board 
Sure, and the ESOP is the bulk of it now done. I mean, should we expect that to kind of trend moderate going forward, or how should one look at it? Yeah, so you know, obviously, largely, if you see, uh, most of this has been accounted, you know, because the last was given in 2019, now, and I think that has been accounted. So obviously, you know, there will be, you know, more new ESOP will grant will be given, you know. Uh, in terms of uh, which will be vesting in the next four years, but but this will not be as significant as what we have, uh, you know, given originally. Okay, thank you, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Tanvi from Banyan Tree Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hey, thank you, and congratulations on the good set of numbers. Uh, so I had uh, probably you know two questions. One was on our SIP market share. Uh, you know, it's, uh, when you know, did mention about uh, that you started seeing inflows, uh, but still our SIP market share continues to you know, uh, uh, trend down. Any thoughts on that? And secondly, uh, you know, while uh, you did talk about the fact that uh, the, the falling yield of the equity would be taken care of by the operating leaders that we would see in the business. Whereas, you know, uh, if you look at the on a overall basis, uh, the, the recent launches and the upcoming launches would be on the passive side of the business, right? So if, if one were to look at the overall, you know, uh, yield from a three to five year perspective, how do one look at it? Like, uh, because uh, of course the passives would have a lower realization, revenue realization. Uh, so how how the overall realization would look, you know, in next three to five years or not, you know, uh, structural basis because at one side we will see equity is coming down and then the second side we will see the share of assets going up which again are lower yielding products. These are two questions that I have. So I'll request uh, Sogata Chatterjee to take the first question and after that Pratik will come back to the second question please. Sogata. Sure, yeah, hi Gunal, thanks. Uh, yeah, with regard to SIPs, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, if you see the trend line this year, uh, quarter on quarter, our SIP uh, market share, both uh, from a uh, the SIP uh, uh, creation point of view, which is the actual SIP number coming in, and the SIP input value, both have uh, been an, uh, been seen an increasing trend. And uh, you know, as we speak, uh, we also are tracking the market share, uh, how much of market share growth uh, we are getting in that space. Uh, going forward, I think uh, the way our trend line has been uh, reflecting in the last two to three quarters, it clearly shows that the market share growth now in, uh, on the SIP side also will start happening because both are correlated. The equity uh, growth sales, uh, net sales growth and the SIP market share, uh, uh, they are all correlated. And like Sandeep mentioned earlier, uh, the trend line clearly shows that going forward, uh, with increasing SIPs, uh, 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 you know, SIP flows coming in into our into our funds, the retention improving, the uh, the net SIP market share also will start growing. So, so the trend line is clearly uh, positive, uh, in, uh, you know, and hence we are optimistic about the flows going forward. Got uh, it. Sure. Your question. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, in terms of. Uh, the yield, uh, you know, what you to factor in, you know, from your business model perspective, obviously, uh, due to this composition of uh, ETFs uh, or taxes uh, rise in share, you know, obviously the overall yields will be under pressure. But I think, uh, you know, we do not see it that way. Uh, what we do is we segment that. Uh, we see active versus passive differently and in active also equity, fixed income, and other uh, areas separately. So obviously what we need to do is we need to keep working on each of these segments and ensure that, you know, we our yields remain, uh, you know, or from the yield perspective, uh, you know, we continue to grow, uh, you know, on a, sorry. So, uh, you know, we continue to grow on the absolute basis. And uh, so if you see that in the last, uh, you know, two, three years also, we have seen a compression of two to three basis points on the yields. But I think broadly that is getting offset because of the uh, the growth. So that I think will continue. Uh, from a uh, from the uh, passive perspective, I think uh, what one has to see that this is a new set of AM which is coming in, and the recent growth is a classic example that you know assets have started growing much faster. And I think the asset growth uh, you know will take care of the uh, absolute profitability. I'm not saying on the realization piece. 
So going forward, you will continue to see asset growth uh, is uh, faster than the revenue growth. So that will, uh, you know, that is uh, likely to happen. Sure, got it. Thanks. And uh, one last question, if I exclusion, is on the you know overall competitive uh, situation in the market. Like uh, since you know we have seen some softness in the NFO on the active side, and uh, you know they were like of course two problems. One, the new assets were coming at a lower yield, but again there was a lot of you know distribution uh, commissions that were being paid out across the industry because of the NFO season. Uh, with that you know softening, are we seeing any? You know, uh, normalization in the distribution. Uh, so, this, yeah. as I mentioned earlier in my opening comments, I think every company will have a different strategy. I think our focus remains on profitable growth, and we will not be uh, acquiring business which is not profitable for us. Sure. Got it. All the very best, Andy. Thanks a lot. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jignesh Sihal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, no, thanks a lot uh, for the opportunity. Just wanted to reconfirm. Uh, 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 did, did you see that, you know, in case if the yield, uh, you know, uh, softens further from here on, we'll be able to manage expenses and accordingly revenue to profit should be somewhere around 50%. Is, is that uh, my understanding correct? Has that been the statement? Yeah, so, you know, in terms of the operating revenue uh, or op net operating revenue to the revenue is about 50%. Yeah. So, uh, that is what I have mentioned. And, uh, you know, up, up. so, see, if you see the if assets keep growing and, you know, there is no incremental cost. So, whatever we are earning, let's say even if we earn uh, on an incremental asset, if I earn 25 basis point and there is no incremental cost, then operating revenue goes up by that much. So, you know, that, so we have that much of flexibility at this point of time, uh, you know, given that, you know, asset growth will be, uh, you know, more or less in line with the inflation uh, and thereabouts, while asset growth uh, would continue to in the in excess of 20 to 25%. So even if you see the last decade, you know, uh, you know, the industry has grown in excess of 20% CAGR, despite the uh, volatility in terms of COVID or, uh, you know, if you see the, uh, the geopolitical situation. Mm. Except for the one quarter, there was no decline in the industry, AM, you know, which speaks volume. And also the SIP input value, which declined a bit in the, uh, you know, uh, first two quarters. But again, it has come back. So from an 8,600 crores of uh, total SIP book, uh, which was in January, now it is uh, close to about 12,300 odd crores. So I think both these things show that, you know, industry is on a secular trend. And given the fact that we are so underpenetrated, just about 18% of GDP, we have a long way to go. And if the asset growth remains at this pace, you know, and our cost remains more or less, uh, cost increment remains more or less, then I think we'll be able to manage these ratios. Understood. So basically, uh, operating leverage is going to you know, play out uh, a good role. Yeah? Absolutely. Understood. Understood. Uh, second, uh, also, you know, uh, from the debt and liquid fund side, is, is my understanding correct? What... Uh, uh, you know, I guess one of the men said that uh, uh, the profit uh, would come up for the for managing money and all. So, is our understanding correct that liquid will will still see a flow over debt fund at, the, at least in near term till the time we don't see a clarity over you know or uh, uh, this interest rate rising resign gets settled out. We will see a momentum in uh, liquid more compared to uh, debt. Is that understanding correct? That is true. Uh, yeah, so to some extent you're right. Uh, you know, so in the near term, mm -hmm. okay. So we're still in the first quarter, first month of the first quarter or quarter of this FI. So, uh, uh, so, so uh, but at the same time, I'd like to mention that a large part of, you know, the action that is anticipated by the central banks has already been built in into the yields. You know, mm -hmm. both in India and overseas. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, going forward, whatever action that does happen. Okay, uh, you would see a knee jerk reaction, but from here on, at least it'd be shorter, uh, uh, you know, for, for the next uh, let's say one quarter, one, two, or two quarters, you will see some inflows in the liquid plus ultra uh, short term funds. Yeah. But thereafter, I think uh, as things start playing out, you know, the trends might change. So, yeah, exactly, yeah, beyond the first two quarters. Absolutely. And uh, 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 before I, I ask, you know, a two, uh, more like a strategy question to uh, Mr. Sikha, I just want one number was 
can i get the, the gold etf number the possible gold etf is yours last time i think it was somewhere around ஒரு <laughs> uh uh and then uh, you know that is somewhere you know we are also building in that uh, we should see uh active equity uh, should should see a rise uh, apart from this anything specific you want to you know you want to mention specific on the marketing or on the sales side uh, how how we are you know tackling it up uh, as far as active uh, aum share active equity aum share is concerned that is one if you want to highlight something more on it and number 2 uh, how do you see consolidation happening on the you know on the aims industry in general i mean uh, we are definitely you know getting into a segment where people in spite of or despite having uh, uh, you know a lot of uncertainty over covid people kept on investing in aims i mean mutual fund that that's a very you know a brighter uh, kind of a note that we are having it for this year so how do you see uh, uh, you know overall period of next Uh, you think the next three years kind of view if you have it that do you see more consolidation happening large players dominating more uh, or branded guys are able to dominate more just you know a couple of lines from your side would be really helpful so i think you have asked too many questions i don't know how how i'll be able to answer in uh, this call but i think i'll try to do just in the next two three minutes try to give you some sure, sure. thank you yeah so this thing from our perspective i think uh, broadly i think we we have always mentioned this industry uh, is a very simple industry the key to the success is execution i think and for us i think we are going to continue executing uh, the most important part of the strategy is uh, what to do and not and also what not to do so i think from our perspective i think one thing we have decided is that i think for us retail remains a very very important part because it is not very easy to execute and we've been able to get that secret sauce right Mm-hmm. uh the fact that during the year also sentry lab new investors getting added uh, i think which is i think if you look at the data is equal to uh what has been added is more than uh, uh investor base of any mutual funds in india which have been there for more than two decades mm-hmm. so and i think we also clearly believe an investor which comes once i think he will only uh keep topping it up as the in india the per capita income goes up other uh, other avenues to invest keep reducing uh the money into capital markets with mutual funds will keep going coming even increasing mm-hmm. uh to your other point i think what has happened in the last two three years during covid we saw a lot of investors come into capital market and also to the mutual fund industry mm-hmm. uh, uh for, for us i think we see both complement each other anybody coming into the capital market i think in one form or the other i think uh, this money eventually will also come into mutual funds because during these two years work from home after work from home is over everyone has to go back to the day job and i has to also the trading will go away and people will have to invest for long term and i think we clearly see i think the investors coming into once you have been exposed to capital markets you'll come into mutual funds mm-hmm. and finally i think when we look at our own data i think we have seen there is a conversion you know there cross pollination of you know we see etf investors also move into active and active move into etf so from mm-hmm. our perspective we are very strong on both the sides so i think i am very excited about the next 3 years so i think the as for the strategy you asked i think the strategy remains exactly the same to execute i think and execution is going to be the key to your final question on consolidation i think i clearly see i think in india can have many more asset management companies i think mm-hmm. at this point of time also uh, the percentage you know if you were to see the unique investors uh, is less than 3 4% of the population but i think it is going to be the winners are going to be the one who can execute and execute in smaller cities and towns that will hold the key absolutely uh, really really thanks for that that's really helpful no uh, and thank you thank you and all the best thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and the next question is from the line of ronak chera from varga capital please go ahead hello yeah ronak so, yeah just one question sir uh, if i uh, heard you correctly did you say that the transition of the aum to trail fee uh, has been 50% Uh, is that what i picked up uh, when you are answering to an earlier participants learning to 
No, no, no. So I'm saying that look, it is not transition because see, we have also, if you see, our overall assets have grown. So in, uh, if you look at it, uh, as of March, we were like close to about uh, 62 March and 62,000 crore. Today we are about one lakh, uh, you know. Uh,